Hello, and welcome to the 6 update video for Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition. In this video, we will be going over the newest fixes and features for the project, which includes upscaled images, widescreen map support, integrated shaders, and much more. So let's jump straight into it. If you are currently using Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition, you will need to remove indirect sound and reshade from the game's directory if you are using them. Go to Silent Hill 2 PC's directory and look for the following files and folders inside the game's main folder. dsound.dll, dsound.ini, dsound.log, the reshade-shaders folder, d3d9.dll, d3d9.log, reshade.ini, and reshade underscore sh2pc.ini. If you see these files and folders, that means you are currently using indirect sound and or reshade. Remove these files and folders from the game's directory if you have them. For this update, you will need to download the latest version of the following enhancement packages. The Silent Hill 2 Enhancements module. The Enhanced Edition Essential Files. The Image Enhancement Pack, which is an all-new package for this project. And DSOAL which is also an all-new package for this project. We will discuss the new Image Enhancement Pack and DSOAL in just a moment. You can download the latest version of these packages by visiting the installation page of the Enhanced Edition website. Go to the changelog table to see which packages have been updated, click on the appropriate packages link to go to its install step, download the package, and replace any files within the game's directory if prompted. Download links for the latest updated enhancement packages will also be in the video description below. So to start things off, Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition now features upscaled images. The 2D full screen images throughout the game have been AI upscaled, remastered, and in some cases, remade to provide the highest quality versions to date. It's important to note that only the 2D full screen images have been updated. These images are the main menu, save screens, maps, inventory, riddle, and memo images. To coincide with the new upscaled maps, the maps themselves will now display and function correctly in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. This not only looks nicer when playing in widescreen, but can also allow you to see more of the map while zoomed in. And with these updates to the full screen images, we've also changed how the full screen images feature, found in the d3d8.ini file, works in the game. Setting its value to 1 will display the images without any cropping, which will show a pillar or letterboxing depending on the aspect ratio used. 
Setting the value to 2 will zoom in on the images to remove any pillar or letterboxing, up to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And setting the value to 3 will scale to display the images in full for 4 by 3 aspect ratios. The default value is set to 2. We were using indirect sound to fix the issue of popping or clicking noises that could be heard whenever a sound file ended prematurely. We now have an integrated solution for this issue, which means we no longer need to use indirect sound to fix this. Additionally, indirect sound only fixed the pop-in and click-in noise for sound effect files in the game. With our integrated solution, we can fix the pop-in and click-in noise for all sounds throughout the game, such as the sound effects, background music, dialogue, and FMV audio. Because we no longer need to use indirect sound with the project, we are able to use DSOAL instead. DSOAL enables surround sound, HRTF, and EAX audio support for older games. For Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition, this enables 3D positional audio, which restores the sound presentation of the game for a more immersive experience. After installing DSOAL, try playing the game with a pair of quality headphones for a fresh auditory experience with the game. Continuing on the topic of audio, we have now locked the ability to change the speaker configuration through the game's options menu. If you tried the changes in the game's options menu, it would revert your change every time. This is because Windows will no longer allow you to change your speaker setup through an application, such as Sonal 2 PC and can now only be changed through Windows Sound Control Panel. Our project now includes integrated shaders, which drops our need to externally use Reshade. Shaders are post-processing filters that can adjust the visuals of the game. For Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition, we offer three different shaders, which can be found in the d3d8.ini file. These are a brightness shader. This restores the ability to change the brightness of the game through the game's options menu. This brightness shader will only affect the game image and works regardless of playing in winded mode or not. A color temperature shader. This shader gives the image a slight cool tint to better match how it would look playing the PlayStation 2 version back in the day. And an SMAA shader. SMAA is a low impact, performance friendly anti aliasing solution that is particularly ideal for weaker or older computers that would like to benefit from anti aliasing. We've updated information about anti-aliasing for the game on the project's website, so be sure to go to the site's troubleshooting page and read the What Anti-Aliasing Should I Use for the Game link for more details on the SMAA shader. We've added a feature that allows you to take screenshots of the game and have the images automatically save out in the game's directory. Go to the site's troubleshooting page and read the Is there a way to take screenshots of the game while playing link for more information on how to take screenshots. We fixed an issue where James's flashlight would seemingly turn off at the end of the cutscene where he fails to push the apartment grandfather clock. This issue affects all other versions of the game. We fixed an issue where Eddie's revolver would be standing straight up on its grip upon defeating him. This issue affects all other versions of the game. 
The lighting levels for the area in which you encounter the final pyramid heads has been adjusted to better match how it looks on the PlayStation 2 version. This issue also affects the Xbox version of the game. The project now uses a higher resolution fog texture. Before, the fog texture used was 256 by 256 pixels. This has been increased to 512 by 512, which now also matches the PlayStation 2 version and effectively completes fog parity between both platforms. We fixed an issue where, if you back out of the pause menu in a room where you can use your flashlight, and the flashlight was already off, James's body would momentarily light up. We've made it to where the low health red cross indicator will not be shown in the snapshot for your health status on the inventory screen. When you're low on health, this health status snapshot will flash red. If you heal yourself while in the inventory screen, the health status snapshot will change to be tinted green, signifying you're healthy again. Even though you heal yourself, the low health indicator is still shown in the snapshot, which could confuse some players. Because of this, the low health indicator is no longer shown within the snapshot. We've disabled the low health Red Cross indicator for other events in the game. We offer a feature to disable the low health indicator during cutscenes, but there are certain events in the game that should be considered a cutscene, but the game does not classify them as. We've now disabled the low health indicator during these type of events as well for an overall better experience. and we fixed an issue where the inventory screen wouldn't correctly update the health status snapshot when interacting with the cabinet in the hotel employee elevator room. <laughs> Lastly, some additional features that have been added to this update are We've improved the game load fix feature to also prevent softlock bugs that could happen even with the vanilla version of the game when attempting to save under certain in-game conditions. The auto-updater for the Silent Hill 2 Enhancements module has been completely reworked. The auto-updater is more streamlined and requires less user feedback in order to update itself, and the formatting of the d3d8.ini file will stay preserved after updating the module. Do note that you must update the Silent Hill 2 Enhancements module to the latest version before the reworked auto-updater will take effect. And that about wraps it up for what's new with the latest update for Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition. This update is now available to download for you to experience these improvements for yourself. The links and information about these downloads will be in the video description below. The Enhanced Edition team hopes you enjoy the newest update to Sound L2 Enhanced Edition. And until the next video update, we will see you around in the foggy town of Silent Hill.